It's nice to meet. I'm yeah. I'm Eleanor. Hello, Eleanor. Could you just tell Julie like one minute about what your organization does, just so she has? I sent her some background, but I think it would be great to hear from you. Uh, yeah, of course. So it's called Youth Serve NYC, and we basically started it this summer um, when we realized that, or I realized that um, a lot of opportunities, like service opportunities that I'd done in the past, weren't really available because of all the COVID restrictions and everything. So we just made it um, a place that, so we both organized and created new opportunities, and we kind of split it into um, virtual service in person and then we have the speaker series as well um, and so for virtual we did things like tutoring and calling or emailing um, homebound seniors and then we also organized weekly in-person projects um, so we did some meal deliveries at the stanley isaac center and so basically we're just continuing that work into this school year um, a little less because it is the school year, but um, similar things, finding in-person ways to volunteer, even with COVID restrictions and continuing the same virtual opportunities and speaker series. Um, and, and just one quick question before we start. Geographically, your members, are, would you say, because you mentioned Stanley Isaacs, are they um, mainly in Manhattan, Upper East Side, like where exactly? Um, as of now, I've, it is basically my classmates. So because my school's on the Upper East Side, um, mostly from that area, but, or not just from the Upper East Side, but in New York City, mainly okay. Manhattan, but kind of scattered. Got it. Okay, great. Um, okay, I can also start. I have a little introduction. So hi, everyone. Thank you all so much for coming. Um, this is Youth Serve NYC's fourth speaker. And I was just, as I was just talking about a little bit, Youth Through NYC is a service initiative founded and run by young people who want to become more involved in the work of rebuilding New York City in the wake of the COVID-19 crisis. Youth Serve NYC is a way to engage peers in service and in social justice. Today, we are so happy and fortunate to welcome Julie Manon, the Director of New York City Census 2020 and the Executive Assistant Corporation Counsel at the New York City Law Department. Ms. Menon has had a long and very impressive career in public service in New York City, including commissioner and leadership roles at many city agencies. Um, and now she has turned her attention to the census, where, as we know, an accurate count in New York City is critical in determining the distribution of more than a billion dollars in federal funding for the city and determining the number of congressional seats that we get. Thank you, Ms. Menon, again for joining us today. We are so excited and fortunate to hear about your work on the census and anything else you'd like to share. And just to remind everyone, um, later when we do questions, if you have any, you can just type them into the Q&A function and I'll read them aloud. So, over great. To you. Well, thank you so much for that incredibly kind introduction and thank you for having me today. And I really wanna congratulate all of you on starting this new initiative because public service and civic engagement, particularly at this time in our city is so vitally important. And when you think about some of the challenges that face the city, it's really the younger generation um, that is gonna inherit a lot of these issues. And certainly the census is one of them. The census happens once every 10 years, it's embedded in the constitution, but it affects the next 10 years of our city's future. So if we don't get it right this time, it's basically gonna mean 10 years um, of funding and congressional representation. So let me talk a little bit about that. So basically the reason why the census is so important is because it means funding for over 300 programs nationwide. It's everything from our public schools to public housing, to senior centers, to Medicaid, to roads, tunnels, bridges, free lunch programs, Head Start. Uh, all of these programs and so many more depend on the census. The best way to think about the census, it's a national competition. So for every New Yorker that simply says, I'm not gonna be bothered, I'm not gonna take the 10 minutes it takes to fill this question out, and it's just 10 questions, that basically means that other states receive funding that is rightfully ours. But also it means they get our congressional representation because congressional seats are drawn based on census numbers. So to give you an example of that, 
in the mid 1950s, we had 45 members of Congress in New York State. Today we have 27. In an undercount for the census, we could lose two seats and go to 25. Now, for those of you that are interested in politics, the census is actually uh, unfortunately highly political. And I say unfortunately because the census is technically supposed to be nonpartisan and actually not political. Um, but this time around, and this is one of the reasons the city is so engaged in organizing, is President Trump has um, interfered with the census in a whole number of different ways. So I will just briefly touch on a few of them because I think it's really important that people understand this. So a, about a year and a half ago to two years ago, the Trump administration tried to add a question to the census that hadn't been on in 70 years. And that question was, are you a US citizen? And we sued. I also work at the law department. We were plaintiff on the case. We took our case to the Supreme Court and we won that case. And basically we fought so hard on that case because if the citizenship question would have been on the census, it would have devastated um, New York and other cities that have large immigrant populations because a city like New York, we have over 3 million immigrants. Um, for many immigrant families, uh, that either have someone who's undocumented who live in the home or they might be undocumented, that would cause a lot of fear answering that question. And so that was why the Trump administration tried to ask it. But there's also been other interference. So most recently, um, President Trump announced that he was gonna cut the census short by one month. So now suddenly our deadline, which was supposed to be October 31st, is now September 30th. So we only have two weeks left. So for all of you, the thing that I would ask you all is first of all, to make sure that your household has filled the census out. Only one person per household fills it out. So the first thing to determine is, has your household completed the census? If not, we need you to complete it by going to my 2020census.gov. Again, my, M-Y, my 2020census.gov. Um, I will say, and we were talking about this earlier, is Manhattan, and particularly the Upper East Side, has some of the worst numbers in the city, and it's dragging down our overall response rate. The Upper East Side is around 50%. That's unacceptable. That means half of residents on the Upper East Side simply have not filled it out. Now, one of the things we've been really focused on is for those New Yorkers that left New York City during COVID, we need them to fill the census out. You could fill the census out from any computer, any phone by going to my2020census.gov. And so one thing that I think you all could really help on because um, you, know, you have a network in this area is to ensure not just your own families, but all of your networks have filled out the census. We have to boost these numbers in Manhattan because they really are pulling down our citywide number. And that means that honestly, for so many New Yorkers who really need the most help, they're not going to receive it simply because some people have opted not to take the 10 minutes it takes to do their civic duty. So that would be the one ask that I would have of all of you. We've got really engaging social media content. We can give you things to post on Insta, um, Facebook, Twitter, whatever social media account you might use. We have Cardi B in our TV ads. We have Alicia Keys. So we've got like really great content that we can give to you all, but it would be great if you all could help the city of New York in its greatest time of need. And I know we're gonna open it up to questions soon, but the last thing I would say on the census that's really so important is, if you think about what happened with COVID, if more New Yorkers would have filled the census out in 2010, we would have had more funding today for our hospitals, for healthcare, so you can really see why it matters. Also, the New York City Health Department um, looks at census data to determine how to respond in an emergency. So when there was a measles outbreak in New York City last year, the health department looked at census data to determine, well, how many measles vaccines do we need to order? One day, hopefully, there'll be an efficacious vaccine for COVID. We want to make sure then that no one in, is invisible and that we make sure that every New Yorker is counted. So I'll end there. There's so much more I could say about the census. We've um, called 3 million New Yorkers. We've sent 7 million texts. We've done all different types of outreach and we continue to do that. We have a lot of volunteer opportunities for those of you that are interested in that. And thank you so much for having me today. Thank you so much. Um, so yeah, if people have questions, they can um, ask them in the Q&A function. Um, I have a few to start with. Okay. Um, 
So I think the first one, which you touched upon, but how has COVID-19 affected our ability to get an accurate census count? So unfortunately, COVID hit right when the census started. So the census started in the middle of March. That's when COVID was really hitting New York City. So we had to suspend all um, in-person events, uh, and that really hurt our numbers. So we, as you all know, as New Yorkers, were unfortunately the epicenter of COVID in March and April and May and June. And so it had a really detrimental impact. But with that said, we were still able to phone bank um, people, meaning we called them. We called over 3 million New Yorkers. We've sent over 7 million texts. We have 26 different um, media campaigns that we're running in multiple languages. Um, so we continued to do all of that work, but we had to do it virtually. And so that's obviously much harder. Um, and adding on to that, has COVID changed the priorities of the federal funds for New York City? Um, that's a great question. So because uh, census is related to Medicaid in particular, um, you really see why something like COVID, if, if people don't respond to the census, it, there's like a direct correlation then between how that can impact our healthcare system. So absolutely, COVID changed that. But in terms of the types of things that census funds, that is a pretty strict uh, formula in terms of congressional allocations. Thank you. Um, and also, this is just a brief note, I saw that some people raised their hands. It would be great if um, they could actually just type them out, the questions in the Q&A function, which is at the bottom. Yeah, okay, great. Um, okay, so you talked about how you were involved in the um, Supreme Court's court case um, about challenging the Trump administration's effort to add a citizenship question to the 2020 census. Um, can you just talk more about this and the greater significance it has? Sure, I'd be happy to. So uh, the census is supposed to be completely apolitical. The census is supposed to count Republicans, Democrats, independents, people who are not registered with any party. It, it's in Article One of the Constitution that every single person needs to be counted. And what happened here with this case is the Trump administration tried to add this question because they knew that it would cause fear and intimidation in immigrant communities and communities of color throughout not just New York, but all across the country. So this was really a blatant and insidious attempt to try to defund largely democratic cities, have those cities lose funding, and then really have red Republican areas around the country pick up that funding and pick up those congressional seats. So for those of you that are paying close attention to the presidential election, this actually, you know, when, when this happens and congressional districts are redrawn, the idea that cities would lose congressional representation, but more red rural Republican areas would pick it up has an effect on the electoral college. I mean, it has an effect on presidential elections for years and years to come. And that's why we fought so hard and we took the case all the way up to the Supreme Court. Um, and it was an enormous legal victory for the rule of law and for justice. But I will say, that even though we won the case, a lot of the damage was already done. Mm -hmm. It's because it was in the press all the time. A lot of people still think the citizenship question is on. And we have to remember, 40% of New Yorkers still haven't filled the census app. We have only two weeks left. So this is a real challenge. And that's why, again, I go back to this issue of Manhattan. Because, and there was, for those of you who read the New York Post, we read a huge article in the New York Post today about this. Um, is the Manhattan numbers are pulling down the census. They're pulling down our numbers. We have to lift them up. We need to lift up numbers all across the city, but we need to lift them up there as well. Uh, thank you. Okay, so now there's some in the Q&A. So you mentioned volunteering opportunities. Are there things people can do, including part-time, to help get an accurate count? Yes, so we have two weeks to go. Um, our MI team can put in the opportunities to do phone banking with our team. We also have in-person events that we're doing. So she can put in the, um, all the volunteer opportunities. But I wanna say like one of the best ways to volunteer and you can do it from your home and it doesn't take a long time to do is of course to post on your social media. But then to like think about your whole individual network, your neighbors, 
um, people you know that might have left New York and that, that maybe you're not sure if they filled the census up, sending them a quick email, sending them a quick text saying, I just learned that the Manhattan numbers are lower. We really need to boost them. Did you know that the census ends in two weeks? Has your family filled it out? Because any member, one person per household fills it out, but it can be any member of that family that does it for the whole household. Uh, okay, now there, I think there's some, like there are two that are related. So um, how is this playing out in other parts of the US? Is New York City an outlier or are there similar undercounts elsewhere? Um, yeah, that's basically what the other one is too. It's a, great, it's a great question. So we right now in New York City are six points behind the nationwide average in terms of self-response rate. So the nation's at 65%, we're at 59%. Um, in 2010, we were 14 points behind the country. So actually as a percentage of how we're doing versus a country, we've closed the gap significantly. Uh, and that's the great news. But with that said, and we're doing better than a lot of other cities, why should we leave any money on the table? Should we be satisfied that 40% of New Yorkers have just not filled this out? No, we have to sprint to the finish line. We have to do an all out sprint in the next two and a half weeks and get everyone counted. The other thing I wanna mention, and I don't know if there's a question on this or not, but we get tons of questions on this, so I wanna mention this. For those people who left New York City because of COVID temporarily, some of them mistakenly fill the census out from their temporary location. So I'll give an example. If someone had a second home in the Catskills and they go up to the Catskills and they're in the Catskills, they might have filled the form out from the Catskills because the census form says where you are as of April 1st. That's incorrect. We need all of those people, and this is where you can be really helpful messengers, to go back online to my2020census.gov and fill it out using their New York City address. And then the US Census Bureau takes out the Catskills address because that, that person has filled it out incorrectly. Okay, um, another one kind of adding on to the previous ones um, is are, are there ways um, that you work with other cities on some of these issues? So do you just directly work with them? So our jurisdiction is New York City. Our funds are only spent in New York City. With that said, of course, we speak to other uh, cities, other states about their census effort, uh, absolutely. But it's not a coordinated effort. We gotta remember, I mean, this is a nationwide competition. We're focused on our city. So that's where our focus is. We wanna just get the best number we can for New York City. Yeah, okay. Another one from the chat is, um, how do you determine who gets a census form to fill out? Do you have lists, databases, or past census? Sure. So the city does not determine this. This census is wholly conducted by the U.S. government, by the federal government, not the city of New York. So it is the U.S. government federal government that is sending out door knockers to knock on doors that haven't completed. Now, the reason why is that data is protected by law and confidential. So the city of New York and where the city government cannot um, receive the information as to who has filled the census out and who hasn't. The reason why, again, because you, you want the census to be confidential, so you don't really want it to be shared with many different parties. Um, with that said, the reason why the census is, uh, the city is organizing the census effort is because of all this interference by the Trump administration because we became deeply worried that um, we would have a severe undercount in New York City if we didn't organize. So we do have teams of people out there doing what's called paid canvassing, um, talking to New Yorkers about filling it out. We're the ones running all those advertisements that you see with Cardi B and Alicia Keys and others. That is our work. We're the ones that are phone banking. We're the ones doing the text messaging. So that is our initiative. But we don't determine. The census form is sent to every single person. Um, okay, another one is, do you think the census should be filled out more often? Would this be politically feasible? So it's an enormous endeavor to count once every 10 years, and that is a constitutional mandate every 10 years. So that is sacrosanct and really set in stone. Now, with that said, the U.S. Census Bureau does every single year do other um, forms that they send out. They send something out called the American Community Survey or ACS. It's sent to between two and three percent of people all across the United States. It's 
dozens and dozens and dozens and dozens of questions. Um, and through that, they get various data that is needed um, in this interim period. Um, okay, another one in the, the chat is, can you fill out the census questionnaire for someone? You can, you can absolutely assist someone in filling it out. So for example, if you have a household member, a relative who um, is not able to fill it out, who needs assistance filling it out, yes, of course, you can help them to fill the form out. Um, okay, the next one is a bit more about you. So you've been involved in so many areas of public life and public policy in New York City in the past few decades. Um, consumer affairs, media and entertainment, rebuilding Lower Manhattan after 9-11, and so much more. Um, and which of these have been most meaningful or challenging to you? Just a very hard question. But. Oh, that's a great, well, thank you for that question. That's a great question. I mean, look, I love public service. And so all of these different roles, whether it was serving as a community board chair of Lower Manhattan for seven years post 9-11, helping with the rebuilding of our city after 9-11, the work that we're doing now around the census, consumer affairs, media and entertainment, they're all incredibly important. I've loved each of these roles are all different um, and have a different impact. I do believe though, that this work we're doing on the census is the most vital. And the reason why is because it's going to affect our city for the next 10 years. And no matter what issue you might care about the most, whether it's education, whether it's public housing, whether it's transportation, whether it's seniors and elder care or health care, that it's all affected by the census. So to me, this is the most important uh, work that's going to affect all of our futures um, in terms of New York City. Um, okay, and adding on a bit to the previous question, as you think about rebuilding New York City now um, in the wake of the COVID-19 crisis, do you see similarities to your work in rebuilding the city after 9-11? Absolutely. I mean, absolutely. I'm struck by that every single day. I mean, 9-11 happened and uh, the community that I lived in, um, that I represented, was devastated. And we had to rebuild it at a time that was just incredibly, incredibly arduous and difficult. And now, um, in this COVID world that we're in, um, it's, it's also extremely difficult. I mean, the, the, the plight that New York City faces um, is really a tough and difficult road ahead. Um, and, and a long road ahead with no real endpoint in terms of we don't know when there'll be an efficacious vaccine. We don't know when certain things are gonna happen. So it's that all these variables that we are dealing with, it's a very uncertain time. And so certainly being a part of these rebuilding efforts around the census to me um, is very meaningful. Um, okay, and um, I guess adding on a little bit to that as well, um, as you help lead the city's recovery from the COVID-19 crisis, what areas are you most worried about and in what areas do you have the most hope? In terms of the COVID recovery for yeah, New York City? COVID recovery, yeah. yeah, I mean, look, I'm, I'm a lawyer, uh, I'm a former small business owner, certainly what is happening with small businesses it is very, very difficult. As we've already seen, so many small businesses have not been able to survive. And so many small businesses are literally on the cusp. And so how they are going to move forward is something that I'm gravely concerned about. Also concerned about our unemployment numbers. I'm concerned about jobs. I mean, th there's almost no issue now that is not viewed in this COVID lens and how we as a city are going to recover. And that's again why I go back to the census because for anyone to say, oh, I'm not gonna be bothered with the census, is a slap in the face to New York City. This is honestly our greatest time of need. We can't afford to leave any money on the table, uh, let alone leaving billions of dollars on the table because people can't take the 10 minutes it takes to fill this form out. Yeah, okay. Um, so you talked about this a little bit before, but it seems like the schedule and timing of the census keeps changing. So 
you can just um, talk a little bit more about the timeline, the national timeline. Sure. For well, this is, I mean, this is really a problem. I mean, be because of COVID, there was a nationwide extension, which we in New York City pushed very hard for. The nationwide extension was supposed to be the end of October. It was announced that it would be October 31st. And that made sense because it allowed then cities like New York that couldn't really have any in-person contact when we were the epicenter of COVID to then have that in-person contact that we sorely need to get New Yorkers counted. Then a couple of weeks ago, Trump announces, nope, I'm gonna end the census on September 30th. And that was that. Th then there is a lawsuit um, on this very topic obviously it's in the we don't know which way it'll go we have to assume in the worst case that this september 30th deadline sticks so we're in this mad sprint to the finish line to get everyone counted thank you okay another one in the chat is um to your knowledge is this the first time that you felt that the federal government or administration has tried to influence the results of the census by either the citizen question or shortening the time for the response so there, I mean, I could speak for hours um, over time, the historical significance of interference in the census. Um, and that, you know, and we'd be happy to share information with you, um, whether it was a three-fifths clause or there was a very, very um, difficult, painful history to the census. Um, but in more recent years, uh, the census has had a lot of integrity. And so the idea now at this juncture in time that there would be interference is completely unconscionable. Uh, there's to have interference like this, repeated interference. And there, it's, it's not just the citizenship question. It's not just cutting the timeline short. There are tons of examples of other ways the Trump administration has tried to interfere uh, from cities largely getting an accurate count. Okay, and I guess this will be one of the last ones. Um, okay. We're so grateful your time for your time and are very mindful of it. Um, do you have any last words for young people who are really committed to the city and its future? Yes, absolutely. Well, first of all, I think it's so great what you all are doing and I really applaud you for taking um, the initiative because first of all, the first step is obviously having the idea and taking the initiative. So that's so great. The census, look, we've got two weeks to go. Having your involvement will be key and critical and we deeply appreciate that. Moving beyond the census, voting. Obviously making sure your know, voter registration is something that is so important and making sure not only to register, um, to vote, but then also voting in elections. So there, there's so many different ways to be involved in, in New York City. And I am a, a firm believer in the city and in the city's resilience and ability to recover. So while we might be facing our toughest challenge yet, I firmly believe we will recover. And I just think it's wonderful that you all wanna be a part of that. So bravo to you. Um, thank you so much. Um, and thank you for everyone who came. Um, I guess we can end there, but yeah, thank, thank you again. Thanks so much for having me, everyone. Stay safe. You too.